Good morning, everybody. Hey, it's Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is noon, well, almost noon, 1145 on Wednesday, and it's time for our daily devotion. So I am just going to take a moment to wait for folks to join me. For those of you that might be new, we read the Upper Room Devotion. So we'll read the scripture for today. We'll um, take a moment to read the um, devotion that's in the Upper Room, reflect on it for a little bit, and then take a time to pray as we close. I want to invite you to come. If you do join and you're new, leave a comment. Let me know that you're here. I'd love to see who all is present. Usually take a moment to welcome folks as they do that as well. Got some folks already online. Great to see all of you. Wonderful to have you. Hi, Marie. Good morning to you. Good morning, Linda. Good to see you this morning. Hi, Jack. Good morning to you. Hi, Diane. Good morning to you. Hi, Barbara. Good to see you and Chris. Beautiful day. Yes, ma'am, it is. Going to be the warmest day for a while, it looked like, according to the weather forecast, because below 30 is headed our way, I see. Hey, Susan, good morning to you. I was telling Allie on, on staff meeting call this morning that um, I'm glad we served communion uh, last Sunday, and we're not looking at serving communion this Sunday, considering it's supposed to be a high of like 18 degrees. Hi, Barbara Paddock. Good morning to you. Jack, Pat, glad that you are both here as well. For those of you who are here, we're going to be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 1. So if you want to find that real quick, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11. Just waiting to see if anybody else leaves a comment. We'll get started here in oh, about 30 seconds or so. Again, we're reading out of 2 Corinthians. It's nice and sunny outside. Beautiful day. All right, friends, how about we go ahead and get started? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. He is the compassionate Father and God of all comfort. He's the one who comforts us in all of our trouble so that we can comfort other people who are in every kind of trouble. We offer the same comfort that we ourselves received from God. That is because we receive so much comfort through Christ in the same way that we share so many of Christ's sufferings. So if we have trouble, it is to bring com you comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is to bring you comfort from the experience of endurance while you go through the same sufferings that we also suffer. Our hope for you is certain because we know that as you are partners in suffering, so also you are partners in comfort. Brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be unaware of the troubles that we went through in Asia. We were weighed down with a load of suffering that was so far beyond our strength that we were afraid we might not survive. It certainly seemed to us as if we had gotten the death penalty. This was so that we, might, so that we would have confidence in God who raises the dead instead of ourselves. God rescued us from a terrible death, and he will rescue us. We, will, we, have, we have set our hope on him that he will rescue us again, since you are helping with your prayer for us. Then many people can thank God on our behalf for the gift that was given to us through the prayers of many people. 
I'll confess that sometimes Paul is easy to read and sometimes Paul is not so easy to read. That was a not so easy to read passage. Why don't they just pick Psalms? Those seem to be so easy to read, right? <laughs> Uh, our, um, and actually, that's leading into our devotion for today. It's written by Molly Johnson from North Carolina, and her focus verse is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's easy to read. Here's her thought and her reflection for today. I have difficult news for you, said the doctor. You have cancer. Shock and fear washed over me. Then came heartbreak and tears. Thus began the endless rounds of scans, medical appointments, and chemotherapy treatments. Battling cancer has been the toughest journey of my life. But God has held me firmly as we walk along this rocky path together. And along the way, I have experienced God's peace and healing. One day, as I was sitting in the cancer center's packed waiting room, I took a moment to study the faces of those around me. I saw fear, worry, and discouragement. I knew how they were feeling because I felt it too. I heard God's clear call to comfort those fellow suffering souls. So I became a volunteer driver with an organization that coordinates free transportation for cancer patients to life-saving treatments and medical appointments. As I ride along with my new friends, we may discuss our latest treatment or procedure, or we may just chat about a favorite restaurant or the weather. And sometimes we say nothing at all because there are no words. But most importantly, I have many opportunities to show God's compassion and to share Jesus' message of love and hope in ways I could never have imagined. So the thought for the day is, God's compassion can speak even without words. I was on a um, call on Monday with our district superintendent, the first Monday of each month. Uh, we have a, a, a call with him. It's a time for him to share like deadlines and things like that. And then he takes a moment <clears throat> excuse me, to ask about and to share a prayer request. One of them is for a colleague of mine who is in Peculiar, and um, my colleague has been diagnosed with third stage lung cancer. And that's, I mean, I can't imagine um, that kind of news coming from the doctor. I, I just can't imagine how that must just absolutely shock the system. Some of you may know someone who's received that diagnosis, or you may have received something similar to that. But but just how it must shock the system. And of course, the emotions that come, fear, worry, discouragement, all those kinds of things. But the interesting thing for him is, is um, over the next few days, I am sure that he has received and will receive numerous cards, calls, emails, letters, all of those things from his colleagues, letting him, letting him know that that we're praying for him and that we're there to support him. The bishop will call him and let him know that he is being prayerfully supported. That is, that is part of our ministry together. So we, we find out quickly that even though we may feel like we are alone and even though we may be struggling with this diagnosis, we'll find out quickly that we've got a cadre of saints around us that are praying for us. If you've been one who's been in that kind of circumstance, you may have had that same kind of similar experience where all of a sudden a group of folks that were your friends, your family, your church members were surrounding you and bathing you in love and comfort and prayer. Right? If you know someone that's going through a tough situation, has received some really bad news, how have you been present for them? Have you picked up the phone, sent them a note, an email, a card letting them know that you're thinking of them, something? How are we present with those who are struggling in these days? And it may be that, that you pick up the phone with them and you don't even have a conversation. 
you may just sit with silence in them and be that 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 simple presence of somebody that they need that shoulder to the proverbial shoulder to cry on um, and words not even be necessary i think one of the things that that we need to be reminded of and one of the beauties of of life together as humans is is that we should pay attention. We should pay attention particularly to those who are hurting because it's a wonderful opportunity for us to share, to share in life together, to take an opportunity to nurture and to care for one another. So think about those that are in your circle today, family, friends, other church members that you might know. And is there someone that God's laid upon your heart that you might just want to reach out to just visit with, let them know that you're there. Take that opportunity. God's prompting your heart today. Take a moment to do that and know that God will use you as an instrument to speak God's compassion to the world and to that person. Let's pray. So gracious and loving God, keep us aware of those who are around us, who are the hurting, Use us in a way in which we might comfort them, just as you have comforted us in our times of need. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining me today. It's a joy to have you here on this beautiful Wednesday. I hope you'll come join me tomorrow. We'll be on at our normal time, so I'll look forward to seeing you then, 1145. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful Wednesday. Uh, if you need to, get out. It's kind of nice out there. But, um, otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you all in uh, tomorrow, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.